that site is not in the optimum location. The optimum location is Three Lanes End. That, in my view, is as close to the optimum location that we are realistically going to get at a piece of land we can realistically expect to achieve, notwithstanding the planning issues which are beyond our, our gift, but which we can make, in my view, a very, very strong public safety argument around special circumstances. And just to conclude, that's where Hoy Lake is. Okay, so you appreciate from there to Hoy Lake, that's a longer run time than from Sobo Massey Road, because there are other options in this with the road network that allows you to get up to what is the uh, what is still part of the West Kirby Station area. Ironically, it's going to take us longer to get to Greasby from Sobel Massey than it will do from Upton. That's just that's just one of those things. I'll pause at that point so you can uh, consider that for your own yourselves. But that is a reality. Mm -hmm. And if it can share to close then, members, the, uh, there are three options that, uh, that, the, that, you, uh, that you need to consider today. The first is to close West Kirby outright, subject to a six week consultation process, and to relocate the fire engine at West Kirby to Upton to be crewed on a whole time detained basis. The second option is to close West Kirby outright on the 1st of April, again subject to a six week consultation process, and relocate the Upton, uh, the fire station to Upton to be crewed whole time retained, and then to direct me to try and secure a optimum location to effectively relocate Upton to. And the third option, the option that I'm recommending, is to defer the decision on the closure of West Kirby. <coughs> which is where this option differs, if you like, from the previous option, to instruct officers to undertake a 12-week consultation process over the merger, which is the closure of Upton and West Kirby to build a new station at Sorgo Massey, which would involve the relocation of the fire plans to be crewed on a whole time basis at the same basis. But to note that, given the fact that we are having to make the financial and therefore the, the, the structural changes in terms of we are not replacing people as they, as they leave, to direct me to bring the report to the authority at the next authority <coughs> meeting, which will explain to you the interim measures that I would take on the delegated operational powers to maintain appliance availability as best as we are able to during any consultation process and during any future structural changes that needed to be made, i.e. submission of planning permission, build and so forth. My recommendation is that you approve the last option, that which I've just described now, for the reasons which are within the report and for the reasons which I think are now now and you are aware of. Uh, apologies for taking a bit of time over this chair. I just thought it was important that members understood the, the options and the implications of the course of that point. Okay. Uh, just before we close off, uh, just to, to let you know that the recommendation is that all
can't solve a massive site. I know that it's not going to be popular with uh, particularly some of my colleagues in the world. Um, but I think here, as a fire authority, um, what I have to do, um, as well in my mind, is to say we have a physically well balanced here. Um, on the other hand, we have the safety of 76,000 people in the wider um, West Kirby Mells area, um, which we can offer them the added safety. Of, I know it's um, still a reduction in the response times, but at least the fire plans would be able to get to them. Um, if we went along this option, uh, two minutes, um, and two minutes is an awful long time if then um, your life or, or your family or you're in a road traffic accident and, and you're in fear of, of life or death. So I think, you know, we have to be pragmatic about this and I'm sure we're going to be going to the chair has suggested the best possible option for the same today. So the way of what we have is a say to repeat itself. In one hand, we have a small piece of green bed land um, yes, it is designated green belt land. It, it's not um, a lush patch, patch <coughs> by, by any means. It, it's a piece of scrappy land, but nevertheless, it's green belt land, and, and that will cause some opposition um, in rural, I'm sure, and uh, comments, <coughs> excuse me, and, and members of the public. But weighing that up against the, as I say, the additional safety for that wider area, area of West Wirral, I, I don't really think that there's any, um, there's any choice in that. And I think it's the best possible. Uh, it's unfortunate, again, I know, um, in one sense, that we have to enter into a full consultation process, but again, I think, you know, again, that's a, a sensible decision to take because it, it makes sure that we're building races, really, and that hopefully that we won't find ourselves in a judicial committee because that would just take us endlessly into future times. So um, I'd be pleased to support options for a I would definitely agree with the Chief's recommendation and uh, we can go with the council events. But I would suggest also that we might have a word with the colleagues in that way. There's an opportunity for them here to show some of the leadership of the community to have them, um, I hate to say, get their priorities right for humanity. So to weigh your humanity against the scrappy piece of green uh, land, this is really not an option, is it? Um, it should be easy for people to make the right decision in that way. And I would suggest that uh, there is an opportunity for politicians in this world to get their priorities right here for the sake of the residents that they represent. said now, you know, you know, we've got an anonymity about the quality be between all the political parties saying that a piece of green land in, in itself shouldn't be protected, but that means there's a good use of it. What I'm concerned about is that, I mean, because it has to go from here, of course, not just to the local authorities, but it has to go to, to that little place down south, um, which is to make some funny decisions, uh, and, and go to a fellow that even makes funny ones. Um, and not be funny or hard either. My concern is that, we're, again, we're going down the road. Is there any possibility that we can bring things together rather than wait for something to happen? Um, so we're planning um, permission to, for the use of, of the green belt, etc. And one can come to with each other to ensure that at least when we get to the end of it, all the, all the little ducks are in, 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 in that road we need to be knocked down. Because I'd hate for us to go through three months or four months um, and with you know the colleagues from the will getting you know public opinion on their side for somebody to say so thank you very much but no it's a green it's a piece of green belt and you're not going to build on it. So can you get 
Is it possible to get sort of a nod and a wink before that was whilst this is going on? Yeah, just to reassure Council that in the event that the authority approved this recommendation, the, uh, as I've said previously, I, I have written already to the Chief Executive of Will to ask that they consider releasing the, uh, the land to the authority. There's clearly without that, but there's no, there is no proposal. And we will engage with our colleagues within Will in relation to planning issues and do as much as we possibly can. I think the, uh, the point quite rightly advised by uh, the clerk to the authority in relation to the determination we were to submit a planning application prior to members having considered the outcomes of the public consultation, then what we don't want to do is to in any way be seen to predetermine the outcome. And I accept there's two views to be taken here, because if <clears throat> there is a train of thought that says, well, if you haven't got the, if you can't get the planning permission, then that then that you don't have an option, it's no different in one sense than the transfer of the, the ownership of the land. It's clear you don't have that, you don't have the option either. But I do believe that thus far, the consultation processes that we've undertaken, I believe, have been of an exemplary standard. And I, I do believe that that's something we need to continue to do. The, the reputation of the authority is, is, is very important to us all. And you can be judicially re reviewed for a, a myriad of, of different reasons and, and I just on balance believe that the, the most expeditious route to take in the circumstances is that which we uh, were proposing and it is very much on the basis of advice that, uh, that we've been given from the clerk to the authority and, uh, and, and, and others externally so I, I, I do believe that we will move this forward as quickly as it can be done in circumstances which present the least risk to the, the authority. Then I can come back to you. I understood that most of trying to say sitting around planning it all but that's an important issue that people have fully away that a public consultation happens so so the members of the planning committee take their views um, in hand when they make their final decision. What I was talking about is if we get to that stage and, and, and everybody is in agreement, it then has to go back to London. It has to go <coughs> to my knowledge, it's hard to know, uh, because it is a degree in well to get authority. Is it not possible for us, whilst this is going on, for at least then for, for those organisations down there to be aware of what we're doing and to know that we're not going to go through three or four months and then to just to be KB again? I don't know if it is possible, I'm just asking for that. I think, because the Secretary of State made that decision. Just to have a strong degree of fruition, just to have a long time, we can try and reach that programming process. Because of the delay, the process is not having an impact on our budgets because it's going to fall behind the deadline for the European Union, which is the same. So I think we'll do all we can to make sure that we can get a good time on this.
start, well, we're not going to start the consultation until the 2nd of March anyway. Uh, we need that lead at the ages in order to uh, you know, advertise the fact that we're going to have public meetings and forums and everything to give people sufficient notice for them to come along and give their presentations and the maximum the impact. We just want to and everything like that. But I think what we're suggesting at the moment is, um, you know, is the right way forward. And um, all we can do in the conversations with others I think, uh, taking off what you just said there, I think um, if we politically, around this table, make a, uh, a decision, effectively it's an in principle decision, relies upon will agree to sell us land and then go through the planning process, you can be assured that our officers will do what is right and what is proper without leading to a suggestion of predetermination in the background. Um, dealing with Wirral, and I don't know what you can do with DCLG. They'll be going into Perda before long, and then they'll be going into interregnum between governments. That that actually it depends on whether they even want to call it in. We don't know that. So um, all we can do is we have to make the savings. We have to make the proper decisions from an operational point of view. That's what we're doing today. And then we'll leave our officers to pursue um, all avenues without leading us into a predetermination. Maybe we need to get that in That's the other way, probably. Right, thank you. I'd just like to do the progress on this. I think uh, the chief has more or less outlined exactly what's needed. It's been supported by uh, unanimous by the president. Yeah. Okay, I'll be happy with that. Yes, please. Okay, item six, which is um, presented.